Hello everyone. In this short video, I want to show you something interesting. Uh, this is a question brought up by one of my students in class today. And the question was, if you have a limited number of resources, uh, like let's say PWM pins, and you have more than that, the outputs, but these outputs, let's say the motors that these PWMs have to be sent to, they do not need to all be active together. So sometimes, let's say here, you have one PWM pin and you have two motors. But sometimes motor one has to use that PWM, sometimes motor two. You don't need to run both of them at the same time. Okay, how would you do that? So if I basically, let's say, click a toggle switch on, I want this PWM to be sent to motor one. If I turn it off, I want it to be sent to motor two, right? How would you do that? And that's exactly opposite of what you do with the switch block because in a switch block or multi-port switch block, it could be either one or several. Uh, here you have several inputs and then between these inputs, you choose which one of them to be sent to the outputs. Here is the exact opposite. Here you have one input, you choose to which one of the several outputs to send your signal right so we want to do the exact opposite job of a switch block or multi-port switch block for that matter here we are just looking at two motors but we can go and send the signal to one of the three motors or one of the ten motors right how do we do that so this is really good for resource allocation and here i call this uh, simulink block conditional signal assignment there are two ways to do it. One is using this block called assignment block. The other way is using uh, if, okay, in Simulink. So let me show you. The one that I prefer is the assignment block. So how does assignment block work? So this signal will take the values of your input U and assign it to the indices of this multi-dimensional output Y. So here the input U has one dimension, okay? And the output can have several dimensions, right? And uh, here the way I did it is instead of making it like that, I had it as one dimension, but then, uh, or two, it's actually two dimensions here. But uh, here I broke it down with the demultiplexer to go to, let's say, motor one and motor two. And here, to which one of the two indices it goes to, I used what? I used a port, okay? So here you see that it says initialize output. This initialize is just the initial value. So right now we just use a separate port for it, Y0 to start the values in the beginning, right? And the thing is this part here, the index option. So you can either assign this U to all of the values indices in Y, or type it in directly here yourself. So it stays constant, or you can type in some parameters here, which you can change in your uh, Simulink, or you can do it through a port. So here I would rather do it through a port. If you do that, you're going to get this extra port here called index. If you don't do it here and do it like that, look, you, you get rid of that extra port that you had. So now you only have input port and the initial condition. But if I prefer here to use it with a port so I can uh, use a signal in Simulink for which port it is to be connected to. So now let me show you how this one works. So the signal I want to assign to one of the motors is this PWM signal that I have generated using a pulse generator block. And uh, the amplitude of it is going from zero to one and uh, the period of it is one second. And the uh, uh, pulse, uh, the uh, duty uh, value, right? The uh, duty cycle is 30%. So it's 30% of the time on the other 70% uh, off. It's like a, it's representing a PWM signal. Initially, I want my values to start at zero, but then immediately after that, I want the values to come from PWM pin. Now, how? 
So here I have uh, two indices, index one and index two, which are coming through a switch block. And the switch block, you know, in this case, if the middle value to it is bigger than zero, it's going to pass the top signal. If the value of it is less than or equal zero, it's going to pass the bottom signal. So if this signal, this constant, which is determined through this toggle switch, if this guy is positive, right, one going to go through, what does it mean? means the PWM is going to go to the first index in Y, which is going to go to mother one. Otherwise, if this toggle is off, this number becomes negative, and two is going to go uh, into the assignment signal. So PWM is going to go to the second index of this vector Y, which is what? Which is what is going to go to motor number two. And here you see that if you double click on this um, toggle switch, which I brought under Simulink under dashboard, here I clicked on this constant block here. And then I said, if it's on, I want the value to be 5. If it's uh, off, I want it to be negative 5. In this case, it doesn't matter. As long as it's a positive number here and it's a negative number here, so this uh, switch does the job, that should be sufficient. Okay, So it doesn't need to be equal to each other or anything. So here, you see right now it's 5. The uh, toggle switch is on. So if I run that... And here I converted this uh, scope block to show two signals side to side. So if you click on it, I went here under this uh, multi-window layout and I chose two of them. Okay, so now if you can see the PWM is sent to motor one, but to motor two there is zero. The signal is of course not sent to motor two, it's just sent to motor one. On the other hand, if I double, if I click on this uh, toggle switch and turn it off and run it one more time, now look here. See now, mother one is not receiving signal. Mother two is receiving the PWM. You see, so I can do it this way, right? So all I need is to change this index from one to two, or if there are uh, there is more than one more than two all i need is to change this to one or two or three okay so as long as i have a mechanism to change this to the number of the motor it is going to or the motors it is going to that should be enough right for instance if you want if you have four motors you can turn on motors one and two here okay then this index instead of being a constant it has to be a vector right so let's say you have four motors here so here I modified it so we can see it. And here uh, I have one PWM and I, I want to either send it to motors one and two or send it to motors three and four, right? So I have one input but four outputs and I want to just pick two out of the four each time. So I did the same thing. The only thing is you have to change this guy to four zeros instead of two zeros because now the output dimension is four. And you either go with vector 1 and 2, indices 1 and 2, get the PWM, or indices what? 3 and 4 will get it. So here I use vectors for these two and a larger vector for that. My demultiplexer has four elements. And now look here. When this guy is 5, the signal is on. Look, motors 1 and 2 will receive the signal if I just uh, toggle the switch. And I run it. Now you see that what happens is motors what? 3 and 4 will get the signal, right? So just like that, you can get what? You can get uh, uh, one input to go to two out of the four outputs. And the other solution, as I said, is using ifs. So here is if, and again, based on whether this uh, toggle switch is on or off, you get a positive or negative number here which goes to this block, which is called if block. And here, if this number is, uh, it says if expression run the action through the top signal, otherwise run the action subsystem connected to the bottom signal, okay? So my expression is U1 bigger than zero, the, the input signal bigger than zero. So if the signal 
is bigger than zero, the top signal is going to go and activate the first system. Otherwise, if it's negative or zero, the bottom signal is going to go and activates the second if action system. So what you need is an if block and you need this a subsystem called if action subsystem. Okay, and what does if action do? Here, the top one will send the PWM to uh, motor one and zero to motor two. The bottom one just does the reverse. You see here, send the zero to motor one, send the PWM to motor two. Now, since you have two signals for motor one and you have two signals for motor two, what you need to do is to combine them, okay? Because clearly you can see that here that you have two signals for uh, motor one, right? It's this guy here as well as this one. So you have to combine them and to combine them, we use the OR. And uh, basically the zero and the PWM will give you PWM, but the uh, case of zero and zero will get you what? will get you zero because if the top one runs and this guy gives you the uh, whatever it does this bottom one will only give you zero and zero so if this signal is uh, positive like this if it's positive what's going to happen the top uh, subsystem will run and what top system does is make mother one pwm make mother to what zero what about the bottom system? What happens to the outputs of the bottom system? Since this one is not activated, both of the outputs of the bottom system will be zero. So you have a zero or with the PWM, which is going to be PWM, and then you have a zero and a zero or is going to be a zero. Yes? So again, the reason I use this OR is because here I have two separate signals for each motors and I only need to send one signal to each one of these motors. That's why I used OR to combine them. So now if I run it, you should be able to see that motor one is getting PWM, not motor two. If I toggle the switch and uh, do it, then you should be able to see motor two is getting the PWM, all right? There we go. Okay, and to me, this is much easier to uh, deal with than if uh, if action and or just to get the same job done. To me, the assignment block is way more powerful, right? And uh, because if you have more motors here, if you have four motors, then you need four of these ors. Well, here, all you need to do is just to treat it as a vector. So this is way more efficient to me, this assignment block. Anyways, I just wanted to show you two possible scenarios. If you have limited inputs and a bunch of outputs, which they are not always active. And hopefully this will help you. Thank you so much for your attention and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.